What is protein synthesis? And what did Mike Mincer think in regards to this process and whether or not protein synthesis slows down within 48 hours after training? Protein synthesis is the process by which cells build new proteins, is a complex biological process that can be influenced by various factors, including exercise. After a workout, the body may experience changes in protein synthesis rates, but the exact timeline and extent of these changes can vary depending on several factors, such as the type and intensity of the workout, individual characteristics, and overall nutrition and recovery practices. In general, following an acute bout of resistance exercise, protein synthesis rates tend to increase during the post-exercise recovery period, which can last for several hours to a few days. This is known as the anabolic window or the period of time during which the body may be more primed for protein synthesis. During this time, the body may be more efficient at using dietary protein and amino acids to repair and rebuild muscle tissue that was damaged during exercise, resulting in increased protein synthesis. However, after this initial period, protein synthesis rates can return to baseline levels or even decrease, depending on factors such as overall nutrition, rest, and recovery. The rate of protein synthesis can be influenced by factors such as energy and nutrient availability, hormonal status, and other physiological and environmental factors. If there is inadequate nutrition, rest, or recovery, protein synthesis may not be fully optimized, which could potentially result in slower rates of protein synthesis within 48 hours after a workout. It's important to note that protein synthesis is a complex process influenced by multiple factors, and it's not solely determined by a specific timeline after a workout. Overall, it's important to maintain a balanced and adequate nutrition, proper rest, and recovery practices to support optimal protein synthesis and muscle recovery after exercise. Mike Mincer was known for his high-intensity training approach and his emphasis on scientific principles in bodybuilding. However, he passed away in 2001, so we cannot directly ask him about his opinion on protein synthesis. In his book, High Intensity Training the Mike Mincer Way, he emphasizes the importance of adequate rest and recovery after a workout to maximize muscle growth and prevent overtraining. In bodybuilding, is comprised essentially of two elements of equal value, literally 50-50, not 60-40 or 70-30 but 50-50, with neither of the elements being even slightly more important than the other. The first element, of course, there's no gain saying it, is the actual workout itself. And the second, the second element, the other 50%, just as important, is the rest period between workouts. And here's why. The workout, you must understand, audience, doesn't actually produce muscular growth. Remember, the workout is a stimulus. The workout merely stimulates the body's growth mechanism into motion. It is the body itself that produces the growth, but only if left undisturbed by further exercise stress during a sufficient rest period. Or in other words, if you don't rest enough, you won't grow enough, if at all. Now here's the crux of the problem. How could anyone know with reasonable certainty how much time need elapse between workouts? Well, I'm going to tell you. Immedi immediately upon completion of a workout, you don't feel the same as you, as you did before the workout, do you? No, you're exhausted. In addition to the personal experience or the subjective sense of feeling fatigued, you're also exhausted in the, in the technical sense in that a considerable portion of your body's resources or recovery ability was used to fuel the workout. You feel like you're in a hole. There was a deficit created. In fact, we call from earlier that to the extent that one works out, that is, performs a number of sets, he digs a hole into his recovery ability. The first thing that the body must do after the workout is not build the mountain on top of the muscle, but fill the hole, or recovery, we call it. And the crucial point here is, the process of recovery is not completed Zippo immediately upon completion of the workout. In fact, the completion of the recovery process itself may take up to five days or even longer in some cases before the body even has a chance to start building the mountain on top of the muscle. And if you train again before the recovery process is completed, you will short circuit the growth production process entirely. 
That's correct. The recovery process alone may take up to several days itself to be completed before the, before the body has a chance to even start building the muscle. He also discusses the concept of the growth threshold, which suggests that the body can only build a certain amount of muscle tissue in response to a given stimulus. Mincer argues that it's important to stimulate the muscles adequately through exercise, but also to allow for sufficient recovery time, as overtraining can hinder progress. While I couldn't find a direct statement from Mincer about protein synthesis slowing down within 48 hours after a workout, it's possible that he would have acknowledged that recovery and nutrition are important factors that can affect protein synthesis rates. He likely would have emphasized the importance of proper rest, recovery, and nutrition to optimize protein synthesis and support muscle growth. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.